Thank you for buying a Brother sewing machine. This DVD has been created to provide an overview of machine operation in line with the operation manual. Please note that some descriptions may not apply to the specifications of your model. Now let's get the machine ready for use. Connect the power cord plug into the jack on the right side. Insert the power supply plug into a wall outlet. Connect the foot controller. Insert the foot controller plug into the foot controller jack on the rear side of the sewing machine. Turn the main power switch on. The sewing lamp lights. Now let's look at how to wind and set the bobbin. Only use a bobbin that has been designed for the sewing machine. Use of bobbins from older models may cause injury or damage to the machine. Pull out the spool pin completely and insert the spool of thread for the bobbin onto the spool pin so that the end of the thread comes out from the right side. Pass the thread from the front to the back around the pretension disc on the upper left side of the machine. Put the bobbin on the bobbin winder shaft and slide the shaft to the right. Wrap the lower thread clockwise around the bobbin five or six times. Pass the thread through the slit in the bottom winder seat. Hold the thread to the right and cut the thread. Slide the sewing speed controller to the right. Then turn on the power and wind the thread by pressing the foot controller down completely. When the bobbin is full, the bobbin starts to turn slowly. Take your foot off the foot controller to stop the machine and return the sewing speed controller to the original position. When operating with a start-stop button, slide the sewing speed controller to the right. Then turn on the power. Press the start-stop button once to start the bobbin winder. When the bobbin is full, the bobbin starts to turn slowly. Press the start-stop button once to stop the machine and return the sewing speed controller to the original position. Cut the bobbin thread with a pair of scissors. Slide the bobbin winder shaft back to the left and remove the bobbin from the shaft. Before setting the lower thread, raise the needle by pressing the needle position button once or twice. Turn off the power. Slide the knob on the right of the bobbin cover and remove the cover. When setting the bobbin, pass the thread through the slit with your left hand and pull the thread toward you to cut excess thread. Make sure that the thread is correctly inserted through the tension adjusting spring of the bobbin case. Replace the bobbin cover. 
Let's complete setting of the lower thread. Let's look now at how to pass through the upper thread of your machine. Raise the presser foot lever. Raise the needle by pressing the needle position button once or twice, and then turn off the power. Pull up the spool pin completely and insert the spool of thread for the upper thread so that the end of the thread comes out from the right side. Hold the thread from the spool of thread. Use your left hand to pass the thread through the thread guide and feed the thread following the arrow. Guide the thread through the thread take-up lever from right to left. To pass the thread through the needle bar thread guide, it is recommended to hold the thread with your left hand and pass the thread with your right hand. Lower the presser foot. With the needle threader lever lowered slightly, hook the thread onto the guide. Completely lower the needle threader lever so that the hook passes through the eye of the needle. Thread the hook. While gently holding the thread, release the needle threader lever. The hook will pass the thread through the needle. Pull the end of thread through the needle. Raise the presser foot. Pass the end of the thread through the presser foot and pull out about 5 cm to inches of thread toward the back of the machine. The machine is now ready for sewing. Now we can start sewing. Turn the main power switch on and press the stitch section keys under the liquid crystal display. Press the plus or minus keys to select the stitch number you want to sew. Pressing the keys on the right changes the digits on the right and pressing the keys on the left changes the digits on the left. Press the utility stitch key. If your machine has one, to select the utility stitch. The presser foot to be used is indicated above the stitch number. In this case, use the J presser foot. Raise the needle by pressing the needle position button once or twice and raise the presser foot to set the fabric. Put the upper thread under the presser foot while holding the thread and fabric with your left hand, turn the hand wheel toward you to lower the needle to the starting point for stitching and then lower the presser foot lever. When sewing the fabric, adjust the speed with the foot controller. To finish sewing, 
Release your foot from the foot controller to stop the machine. And then raise the needle by pressing the needle position button once or twice. When sewing with the start stop button, adjust the speed with the speed controller lever and press the start stop button once to start sewing. After sewing, stop the machine by pressing the start stop button. Press the needle position button once or twice to raise the needle. Raise the presser foot, pull out the fabric and then cut the threads with the thread cutter on the left side of the machine. Now let's try reverse sewing. To sew the fabric in reverse, turn the hand wheel toward you to lower the needle to the starting point for stitching and then lower the presser foot. Start the machine slowly and sew a few stitches. Stop the machine temporarily and sew slowly while holding down the reverse sewing switch. When you return to the starting point for stitching, stop the machine temporarily and release the reverse sewing switch to sew forward again. To finish sewing, you can sew the fabric in reverse while pressing down the reverse sewing switch. Now let's adjust the length and width of the stitch. To adjust the stitch length, Press plus or minus on the stitch length adjustment key. To adjust the stitch width, press plus or minus on the stitch width adjustment key. Let's check the tension of the thread. The thread tension depends on the type of fabric or thread. Try sewing with a piece of the fabric you are going to use and adjust the tension of the thread. Let's try an overcasting stitch. Use the J presser foot or the G presser foot for overcasting stitches. The type of presser foot depends on the stitch you select. To change the presser foot, press the needle position button once or twice to raise the needle. Make sure to turn off the power. Remove the presser foot by raising the presser foot lever and pressing the presser foot button. Align the G presser foot pin with the slit of the presser foot holder. Lower the presser foot lever to attach the foot. Turn the main power switch on and select the stitch number with the stitch selection keys. Align the edge of the fabric with a guide on the presser foot and then lower the presser foot. Sew the end of the fabric along the guide for the presser foot. Let's try blind hem stitching. For 
blind hem stitching, use the R presser foot. Fold the fabric along the desired edge of the hem and then baste it about 5 millimeters or 1 quarter inch from the edge of the fabric. Turn the main power switch on and select a stitch number with the stitch selection keys. Fold back the fabric along the basting and then position the fabric with the right side down. Position the fabric with the edge of the folded hem against the guide on the presser foot. Turn the hand wheel slowly toward you and check that the needle catches slightly on the fold of the hem. Sew with a fold of the hem against the presser foot guide. Let's sew a buttonhole. To sew the buttonhole, change the foot to the buttonhole foot. First use tailor's chalk to mark the position and length of the buttonhole on the fabric. With a button on the guide plate, attach the buttonhole foot. Turn the main power switch on and select a pattern with the stitch selection keys. Pass the upper thread into the hole of the presser foot. Align the red mark on the presser foot with the front side of the marking on the fabric and lower the presser foot lever. Pull down the buttonhole lever as far as possible and position the lever behind the bracket on the buttonhole foot. Gently hold the upper thread with your left hand and start the machine. Buttonhole sewing starts. Let's try character stitches. To stitch characters, use the end presser foot. Turn on the power. Press the character stitch key. And select the desired character stitch. Let's stitch these characters. First, select 02 for B and press plus of the stitch width adjustment key to enter the desired number. Next, select 18 for R and enter the number. Select 15 for O and enter the number. Continue to enter all the character numbers in the same way. After entering all the character numbers, press plus or minus of the stitch length adjustment key to check the character numbers you have entered. You can also add characters after the characters you have entered. To add a character, select a character number and press plus on the stitch width adjustment key. To delete a character you have entered, press minus of the stitch width adjustment key. 
You can delete characters from the last ones. Set the fabric and start sewing. Finally, cut the crossover thread to finish character sewing. The set of characters you entered will be retained in the memory even if you turn off the power. Press minus on the stitch width adjustment key and delete the previously entered characters one by one before entering a new set of characters. Let's look now at how to change the needle and clean the machine. To change the needle, raise the needle by pressing the needle position button once or twice and then turn the main power switch off. Lower the presser foot lever. Hold the needle with your left hand, then turn the screwdriver with your right hand to loosen the needle clamp screw and remove the needle. With the flat side of the new needle toward the back of the machine, insert the needle until it touches the needle stopper. While holding the needle with your left hand, use the screwdriver in your right hand to tighten the clamp screw. Make sure you switch the machine off before you clean it. With a presser foot, needle, and presser foot holder removed, grasp both sides of the needle plate cover and then slide it toward you to remove the bobbin case. Remove the bobbin case. Use the accessory cleaning brush or a vacuum cleaner to remove any dust from the shuttle race and its surrounding area. To reinstall the bobbin case, insert the bobbin case in such a way that the projection on the bobbin case is aligned with the spring. Note how the bobbin case was positioned. We wish you many hours of pleasure with your new brother's sewing machine.